Last devlog, I showed the opening cinematic I had made for Rot Flesh, and in it I hinted at the next area of the game, this green spot. It's an oasis with towering trees and lush greenery. I did the graphics in this area the same way as the ones in the desert, just simple meshes with triplanar textures, and I also added a canopy layer with a cutout leaf texture to give some cool shadows on the ground. I was inspired by Daggerfall to add a cool low-res skybox to the backgrounds, so I made skybox textures for both the desert and oasis areas by stencil painting onto a sphere in Blender and importing the resulting textures into Godot. Then I made a few new guns, a new SMG with a bullpup design that shoots two bullets at once, a revolver grenade launcher that has a five round drum, and a pump action shotgun with a tongue fed reload system. I also made a few new enemies, a soldier enemy to replace the bandits as the generic gun user enemies, they used the new guns I added and have medieval style armor with a flesh exoskeleton. I made so they have different visuals based on what weapon they use, and also I went back and did the same thing for the bandits. Next I made an armored beetle enemy I call the beetle bomber that shoots homing missile bugs out of its abdomen. The abdomen is its only vulnerable spot so you have to shoot it while the bugs are coming out and of course you can shoot the bugs in the air to make them explode. The beetle bomber drops organs with an explosive stat that makes your finger gun projectiles explosive. After that I made a sort of Quake Shambler inspired enemy called the Polyp that shoots hit scan lightning bolts that sort of slowly home in on you. I called it a Polyp because when I was making its textures I stencil painted a police vest on its body and the mirroring made it look like the vest said Polyp and I figured that was a good enough name for it. It drops organs with an electric stat that if you equip makes you shoot hit scan lightning bolts from your finger gun and this is also stackable with other organ effects like explosive. Finally I made a boss fight, the Spine Cat. It's a giant tiger thing that runs really fast and is covered in spikes that hurt you if you touch it. But it doesn't chase you, instead there's a laser pointer robot thing moving on a rail overhead that points at you and the spine cat chases the laser. So you have to move to stay behind cover to avoid the laser pointing at you, while simultaneously you shoot at the spine cat to try to kill it. For making the laser bot rail system, I would just draw out blocks on a grid map and then at runtime an A star graph for pathfinding is generated from these blocks and then the blocks graphics are programmatically replaced with the actual rail piece graphics. After all this, I went back to working on environment art. I made enemy camps with tents and crates and things, but for the friendly NPCs, I wanted to make a large city that they live in. I figured the oasis would probably be where most people are living, so there should be a large city here. I wanted the city's buildings to be based on plants, so I needed to find a plant that's strong and has a predictable structure and has flat surfaces. So I thought, how about bamboo? So I made giant bamboo stalks with holes in them for windows and doors and then filled them with furniture assets I made. The colonists here also have bright red skin since it contrasts better with the green background environment. And I figured lower rise is just the result of basic radiation protection meds since unlike the desert area NPCs, these ones live in the shade so photosynthetic green skin wouldn't really be that useful here. I also wanted to have NPCs that were visiting from other planets so I made this tourist NPC model and they just wear full body suits to protect from radiation since they're not going to be here long enough to justify taking skin modification meds. Alright so now on to miscellaneous stuff I did. I revisited the Terrawarm boss fight since it kind of sucked. I made so now it detects your footsteps and moves towards you, so you have to actually time jumping out of the way since it can't tell where you are if you're in midair. You can also climb on spacecraft wreckage and we'll target that instead. And I made the spacecraft destructible, which looks pretty cool when the Terrawarm slams into it. I also added difficulty settings that right now just affect damage taken and given. In the future I like to make so it affects enemy accuracy and movement speed and stuff like that also. I also added an invulnerability mode so you can just easily skip through things if you want. Another thing I made so your max ammo and drug storage change based on the amount of empty space in your body. And I made so skiing works a lot better. You now slide in the direction of travel instead of just going straight downhill. Then I wrote some new quests and that about sums up all of the new content since the last devlog. Now let's talk performance optimization. Welcome to hell. There are 50 NPCs in this scene. NPCs are by far the most expensive thing in my game performance wise. So I figure if I can get the game to run somewhat well with this many, I should be pretty well off. I get about 50 FPS when they're doing nothing, and 4 FPS if they attack me. So let's improve that. First up, I'm going to do something called time slicing, an optimization where you take expensive calculations and spread them out over multiple frames. For example, instead of having every NPC calculate a path to the player every frame, have NPCs send path calculation requests to a pathfind manager that only does a set number of calculations per frame. You'll get a huge performance boost, and 
it's not noticeable at all in game if an NPC with a gun has a path that's one second out of date. But I already did this optimization in a previous devlog and I also put the actual pathfinding calculations on a different thread because Godot's current pathfinding implementation has pretty terrible performance on large maps and was taking about 8 milliseconds per calculation which is half a frame at 60 FPS. But there's a lot of other things I can apply the time slicing technique to while still keeping them on the main thread. Like instead of having every NPC update nearby enemies and allies every frame, I can have just a couple NPCs update every frame by using physics queries to get all the NPCs around them. And that gives a decent performance boost because then I'm not having 50 do it every frame, I'm only having 2 do it every frame, and it's not noticeable in game at all. And I also applied time slicing to the humanoid NPCs arm IK calculations that attach the hands to the guns that they're using. So I set up 3 priorities for IK calculations. There's low, high, and player. The player updates their arm IK every frame so that they have really nice smooth animations since that's the most noticeable is your own arms. NPCs however are divided into two queues, high and low, based on their distance to the player. So everything I think within 30 units of the player is in high priority and everything past that is in low. So three arm IK calculations are done per frame in the high priority queue and one is done per frame in the low priority queue. So nearby NPCs have smoother animations and far away ones have less smooth ones. And this really isn't noticeable at all in game because they're either standing mostly still when they're idling or they're running around and jumping and shooting stuff and it's too chaotic to notice that their IK calculations are at a lower frame rate than yours are. The next major performance improvement I did was with projectiles. So bullets travel in a straight line and every frame they raycast from their position last frame to their current position to check for a collision and they check for collisions on two layers, hitboxes and environment. But environment is static and never moves and bullets travel in a straight line at a set speed. Meaning when a bullet is instanced, I can just raycast really far forward from it to see if it'll hit anything eventually. And if it will, I just record that collision data and calculate how long it will take to reach that point that it would hit by just dividing the distance to it by that bullet's speed. And then I can put a timer on the bullet for that time. So now when the bullet is traveling, I only have to check for collisions against the hitbox layer. And if the environment collision timer hits zero, I can just teleport it to the position it hit at in case it overshot it a little. And I just play the hit effect and delete the bullet. And I can also improve the projectile performance even more by using bounding boxes. So NPCs have a lot of hitboxes on them. When a bullet passes by an NPC, it's behind the scenes checking for collisions against every single one of that NPC's hitboxes. So I can vastly improve the performance by just making a bounding box layer, putting one large collider on that layer that completely covers the NPC, and then projectiles will only have to check for collisions against that bounding box layer as they're moving along. And that's way fewer colliders to check against. The performance is way better and if it hits any colliders on that layer I just rerun the raycast on hitbox layer and see if it actually hits the NPC and this will vastly improve performance since it only has to check against one collider instead of against 10 as it's moving. The final major performance issue I had was audio related. It turns out playing a bunch of 3D sound effects at once tanks the audio thread and kills performance. I thought of doing some kind of system to limit the number of sound effects played in an area but then I realized that this issue never comes up in regular gameplay so I decided to just ignore it. So final results, um, when nothing is going on, I now get 70 FPS instead of the previous 50, and in combat I get 12 FPS instead of the previous 4. If I mute sound effects I get 20 FPS, but that wouldn't be a good comparison for determining actual performance improvement since that issue is present in both and not in regular gameplay. And that's all for this devlog. I actually just released a course recently that covers a lot of the performance techniques I talked about here, as well as a lot of the AI algorithms that I use in Rockflash. The course is called Game AI Fundamentals with Godot Engine, you can find a link in the description. And of course, if you want to play Rockflesh right now, there are demos on my Patreon, which you can access for $5 a month. Follow me on Twitch if you want to watch me work on the game live. Follow me on Twitter if you want to watch me tweet about the game occasionally. And check out my other courses on Udemy as well if you want to support me and learn how to make a game like this.